Welcome, all of you. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, first thing, of course, also w welcome to, m to my guests who will be uh, introduced in a second. First of all, let me thank uh, Sheffield Fest Film Festival for uh, inviting us and giving the opportunity for uh, hosting us and hosting this panel, uh, which has been organized by the Documentary uh, Film Campus, which is a I hope all of you know it, a uh, uh, great association, uh, um, uh, German association who tries, uh, is involved in film markets and uh, in the organization of film markets, pitching forums and uh, also training programs. One of the great training programs is master school. Um, all right. Um, yeah. Now, about us. Uh, my name is Viola Shafik. Uh, I'm a lecturer and filmmaker. Uh, I'm currently teaching at the Humboldt University in Berlin. And uh, uh, I have two books on Arab cinema, Arab cinema history and cultural identity, and popular Egyptian uh, cinema gender class and nation. That's uh, uh, OK. And uh, I'm also interested. I, was, I cooperated with documentary uh, campus on uh, the um, training program that was launched after after the Arab Spring, uh, the MENA program of the documentary campus, and we were training uh, Arab documentary filmmakers in uh, you know how to tell their stories and uh, how to uh, learn pitching. Um, yeah, and uh, well, for our uh, session today, the collapse of development, does the new Arab documentary wave stand a chance, which is of course a sort of provocative uh, 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 question, uh, meant like that, polemic of course, and we will see whether this is true or um, if it's, it's exaggerated with the help of our uh, guests. Um, let me uh, just uh, ask um, each one of them to introduce uh, himself before he or she starts uh, speaking. But I will start first with, no, I should start first with a lady, but I will not this time <laughs> <laughs> for the reason because uh, um, Mohammed Swed uh, has such an outstanding position actually within Arab documentary for several reasons uh, because uh, uh, he was not only, he has all, he's a novelist and also uh, uh, an academic uh, researcher and wrote about uh, the Lebanese uh, 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 cinema during uh, the civil war, uh, but has also started immediately after the end of the civil war in Lebanon uh, to uh, make him films himself, but also to support others in doing so. So he is, if we want to say so, a sort of mastermind of the Lebanese documentary. And uh, for that reason, I would like him also to introduce himself a bit more and then to tell us um, uh, yeah, about the problems that he saw in, you know, creating that yeah, field of documentary in, in Lebanon, first of all, and then actually he did also a lot for the rest of the Arab world. So, uh, Thank you, uh, Viola. My, I humbly give uh, the platform to Hala out of... <laughs> no, 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 please don't, don't do that because, I, I, you know, it's like I'm, it's structured in a certain way, okay. so please give me the chance to... to okay, thank uh, you. To, I think... To <laughs> not to allow that. <laughs> yes, I think Viola has said uh, enough and maybe more uh, about me. Uh, I'm a writer filmmaker. I uh, participated in many projects. I started from... Uh, uh, I was a simple assistant director and then uh, I became a director and uh, uh, I found myself in the kingdom of movies and uh, I had many credits uh, in uh, documentary especially field and in some uh, fiction films. Uh, now I'm head of documentary at Al Arabiya TV channel, and uh, I try also parallel to that to keep uh, my balance between my own projects and the projects I do for others, or uh, either as a commissioning editor or as a supporter and a, and a friend. And uh, I'll be happy to. Uh, 
answer all your worries and uh, if I can answer, of course. Yeah, okay, so one of my worries is <laughs> <laughs> what happened, I mean, in the sense, how, how, what were the challenges that you had to meet? Um, or let's say, what, what are the, actually the, the general channels, chan challenges that you sense uh, if we compare the generation of the 60s and 70s of documentary filmmakers and you as a generation mm. that cam, uh, came in between, in, uh, so how would you characterize the Arab documentary before, uh, let's say, not only the Lebanese, the Arab documentary before, let's say, the advent of the video, video uh, uh, in, on, in the field and later? Uh, I, I think the challenges uh, from the beginning uh, stand uh, very uh, strong uh, against uh, all the generations. And I think every single filmmaker or uh, independent producer was really left uh, alone. Uh, the difference in the past, we could have talked about sincere collective attempts to uh, to fill in uh, the gaps or try to find a way outside the mainstreaming uh, uh, production uh, occurring in the Arab world. Uh, and uh, the situation was in the 70s and the 60s was a mirror to the regime established uh, institutions, cultural institutions, among them the film institutions. And uh, it was uh, a power play uh, at first uh, manifested by the the uh, uh, the, different, uh, the 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 mechanism of uh, how things were produced. I mean, you have uh, a built state organization uh, which was destined to help uh, local filmmakers to do their films. But the power play between uh, the state and the individual was well uh, reflected in such. So we couldn't uh, produce very much in the face of the state established organizations and we couldn't open uh, a vast and promising trend on commercial uh, level. I mean, uh, facing the mainstreaming uh, uh, institutions, uh, we, we lost our, uh, our fight uh, with them. I think uh, the main difference now with the globalization of many things in the world is uh, that uh, window that to, uh, to the funds coming from Europe, from uh, other countries also in the West toward there. So the, uh, the difference now was in the past, uh, the individuals were supported by their uh, individual, by other individuals. Now, the, our individuals are supported by foreign institutions more, more than that. So what we miss now is the collective spirit our, uh, inside our uh, societies and, uh, and w w it, it's said that the only window to, to, to act is to cooperate with, uh, uh, with foreign uh, fund uh, system. Uh, whereas in the Arab world, even before the latest wars, uh, uh, the big problem remains the same. Uh, there's not a single uh, way to cooperate easily between country and another, between uh, organization and another. There are lots of uh, political obstacles and there's a lack of, uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, we talk about uh, a lot about <coughs> Arab unity, but uh, in practice, we don't have any uh, coordination or cooperation on cultural le level and, and uh, things similar like uh, this. Uh, okay, th thank you. But that seems a very bleak image, but I wonder, you know, because looking at, I mean, I have here two, uh, two um, representatives of co-ops and collectives, so I would like now 
to ask <laughs> the question. Um, let's stay for, for a second uh, yeah. in Lebanon. Jed, you uh, started as, uh, I mean, you are a f filmmaker, but you also started uh, uh, as a producer. Uh, you produced one particularly successful documentary uh, film that was the One Man Village by Simone El Habro, which had uh, it's a creative documentary that was very successful uh, internationally uh, in the art house and festival circuit. And more more than that you are uh, you have uh, you are one of the co-founders of um, uh, of the uh, Beirut DC collective uh, that is also now 15 years old right yes. yeah and uh, on top of that uh, you have been uh, the head of the DocMed training program that was uh, uh, created with Euromed uh, money to in order to uh, train uh, producers our producers. So actually, you started out as a collective. So uh, is that, can we really say, and on top your, your program was uh, pan-Arab. That means it was created for, you know, not only for Lebanese. So can you actually confirm what, uh, um, what Mohammed said? Mohammed talked about obstacles between countries, not uh, in, the, in each country, no? It was the idea. Yes, but I, I spoke about uh, inside uh, also obst uh, internal obstacles uh, when I talked about uh, the state-built mm. uh, organizations and how it became a power play between the individual and mm. the, uh, uh, the... The, the um, Le Le Lebanon maybe is, uh, is a very uh, specific uh, example because uh, the state is, uh, is not strong enough uh, to to put uh, obstacles, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very good for us, <laughs> for for once. Lucky, uh, lucky yes, <laughs> and uh, uh, that's why uh, uh, it's possible to work uh, in Lebanon and to, to make uh, uh, things uh, move uh, faster than the other country. And we were talking uh, yesterday about. Uh, documentary in Lebanon and how things change uh, very fast in the last uh, 15 or 20 uh, years for the past... Uh, in terms of quantity and quality. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I think that uh, uh, because uh, 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 Lebanese uh, are used to, to, to work uh, individually, uh, even, even if I work in a collective, but uh, people like Muhammad or or the other uh, filmmaker who started the uh, documentary uh, were alone, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they built something uh, that we uh, we used to 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 move on. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we we didn't start from zero, and their generation started really from from without any uh, documentary culture mm -hmm. or uh, documentary background. Uh, as for uh, for Beirut DC, uh, we, we we work a lot uh, by needs. Uh, I mean, um, when when we start working on on production, uh, we discover that uh, there is a big lake of uh, of producers in the Arab world, uh, and that's why we 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 create uh, training programs. In the beginning, for directors of uh, the documentary, and then for uh, for producers, and and we uh, we decide for three years in 2011 mm -hmm. to work uh, on building uh, on capacity building of producers in the Arab world, and we trained uh, 13. Uh, uh, so uh, excuse me. 30 producer from all over uh, the Arab uh, country. It's it's really not enough to to, to say that uh, uh, we, we did something big because 30 in all the Arab country we're talking about a huge area, <laughs> and it's nothing. It's it's not a big. Uh, uh, but uh, m maybe uh, those producer. Uh, will be the the start up point, you know, to uh, and uh, and maybe in, in in twenty or thirty years we will have uh, uh, because the directors are there, 
there is a lot of uh, uh, director of documentary in the Arab world who is uh, doing a very good film, and the film are traveling all over the world in all the festivals and uh, the TV channel and whatever. The main problem of, of the Arab documentary is still the lake of uh, producers. And each uh, director is working alone uh, for uh, two, three, four years. You know it. <laughs> we all know it here. And, uh, and, with, and in a very uh, uh, bad condition. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's why uh, we focus on, on training uh, producer. Concerning the new Arab documentary wave, um, I think the, the, the wave, if, 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 if we can talk about a wave, it was not uh, with, with the Arab Spring. Uh, the, the documentary wave started before. Of course. Yeah, no, but because... Uh, no, no, I ah. didn't say that it started with the Arab Spring. Ah, okay, so I, I, I misunderstand you. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Okay, but... Uh, it's not the spring, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's winter, maybe. Winter. <laughs> no, uh, well, actually, I like to, to say it's a purgatory. Not even, a, neither spring nor winter, it's purgatory. <laughs> it's like hell. <laughs> the Arab, <laughs> Arab hell. But okay, I mean, for the, for the, uh, for the sake of uh, people's understanding, unfortunately, we have to use this yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, very contested uh, motion. Um, let me just ask something because Mohammed also pointed something out that is, you know, the issue of foreign funding. And we are going to talk about co-production. We are going to talk about the Euromed pro program and then also the involvement of the Gulf, uh, uh, Gulf region in, in that. So we still have a lot of points too. Mm -hmm. But I would like very quickly to know from you. I mean, we know DocMed was uh, supported foreign, so-called foreign European supported program. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll speak about that program a, a mm. bit more. The, what was your experience? Because it stopped after three years. Yeah. What is your experience with that? Uh, uh, um, it was expected to be to stop in, uh, after three years. Uh, and... Uh, um, well, that's the, the rules. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. the, it's, it's the rules. Uh, um, I mean... Uh, uh, the, the Euromed program um, is, is, is like a start a start up. It means you can uh, uh, get this money and it's a it's an important amount of money for three years to la to launch something big. Uh, so after three years you, you have to decide whether you, you can uh, said okay we will stop because uh, I cannot raise this amount of money uh, from the Arab world, and it's a fact. Or uh, 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 you can decide to, to move on and to, to create a, 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 a something uh, uh, to continue what you are doing. Yani, what, what I'm trying to say that, okay, in, in Beirut DC, we, we, we work like uh, uh, for seven or eight years on uh, um, uh, filmmakers, uh, documentary filmmakers. And then we work for three years uh, uh, on, on the training of producers. And now we decide to, to move on and to create uh, a kind of uh, uh, co-production platform in Beirut, which is Beirut Cinema Platform, which is the first uh, co-production platform in the region uh, to try mm -hmm. to bring uh, uh, this uh, filmmakers and or producers mm. and to let them meet uh, uh, the, the co-producers from Europe and abroad. Uh, and I think uh, this kind of, uh, of financing like Euromed uh, uh, was, was very useful for, for us also because, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a network. And when you build the starting point of the network, then you can try to, to elaborate more. Mm -hmm. And uh, Beirut Cinema Platform is a kind of uh, uh, step further of what we, we, do, we did in the, last, in the past uh, 15 years. And, and now we think that we have to, to give uh, uh, the trainees the, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to go uh, and to meet uh, the international uh, uh, 
uh, sales mm. or producer or whatever. Uh, but, but where does the money come from now for, for the Beirut platform? From, from Lebanon. So it's finally it's, local uh, money. It's local money, but uh, yeah, but it's not the same amount at all. Okay, sure, but it's local money. Okay, now I'm, what I want to trace here is yeah. we have a shift from foreign funding now to local funding, but at least you are doing something. Okay, we'll, we'll discuss yeah, yeah, the yeah. problems, but no, no, but because no, because the training uh, is uh, is for a whole year. Yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, and Thanks. and uh, now we are talking about a four-day uh, uh, event. Of course, event. it's not and the same. It's not yeah. the same at okay. all. Okay, so now let me just very quickly move uh, to the. Uh, I mean, uh, for for you also to understand, for the for the audience to understand the, a bit this, the the geog the map of uh, funding institutions in the Arab world. But let me just we will then ask Lucas about that. But just let me first of all uh, ask uh, Hella uh, about uh, the the Euromed program, because actually the before I introduce her also. Um, the Euromed program actually started, which is very interesting, at a very crucial historical moment, namely after the uh, the Oslo Accords in 1992, and uh, where Europe discovered, oh, we have actually a, a sort of historical uh, also uh, task. Uh, we have the south of the Mediterranean, and we need to, you know, kind of make peace there, help make peace there. So the Euromed program was initially also created in order to foster the north-south relations uh, across the Mediterranean. So there was a Euro program one, two, and three. And Hella, uh, Hella is a filmmaker. Uh, she studied uh, uh, film and she uh, directed several documentaries. Um, Uh, some of them with a special interest also on women's issues. Uh, she has also, along with other uh, w with other people, created a co-op or collective that is called CEMET, that uh, is also already almost 15 years old, uh, so created almost at the same time in Egypt. And uh, it uh, it is until now also concerned, like Beirut DC, with training and with producing with the production of shorts primarily. And they had also, with, in collaboration with the uh, Euromed program, you run the caravan, which was a sort of distribution uh, platform, uh, also uh, cross-regional, uh, which means um, pan-Arab also. So, but can you tell me, you were a beneficiary, a beneficiary of uh, Euromed one or two? Also three, but that is caravan was two, was two the caravan, and then on three we had a, a local uh, project uh, called Rising Stars in Egypt. It wasn't mm. uh, regional. The caravan was the, the two. No, you're right. The second one. Yeah. Um, what was the question? <laughs> the question is, or it's not a question. Just kindly elaborate more on the, okay. first the Euromed program, but also your experience in in uh, developing uh, a cooperative and collective work in Egypt for development, okay. and how did that work out? Mm -hmm. I mean, also for the documentary uh, f uh, filmmakers in Egypt. Mm, okay. Of course, the situation in Egypt is a bit different from Lebanon. It's a big country, huge, and uh, the authority is... Uh, Uh, supporting cinema, but supporting kind of mainstream cinema that I personally don't like. Most of the... Uh, and uh, the documentary... Uh, <laughs> and uh, the documentary also uh, is supported by the government, but uh, again, it's for propaganda, uh, whether for the system or for the Nile and the pyramids. So again, it's a kind of documentary that I don't like to produce or to watch. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, I, with my colleagues, since 15 years, we started to think how to create an alternative space for people who are weird and awkward like us, who wants to make other films and to watch our films, other films. So we create CIMAT. CIMAT is an abbreviation in Arabic, means um, Filmmaker, independent filmmakers for production and distribution. Uh, of course, the, the word in the independent is very... Uh, uh, um, it, maybe it's not accurate, because the cinema is independent in Egypt. It's not like the uh, Soviet Union. 
although it is uh, working with uh, the system. Uh, we were starting by uh, providing support um, for production because we want in the first uh, three years to produce other films and we, we never succeed to bring money from Egypt at all um, because uh, I, um, in my opinion the businessmen and the individuals whether they don't want problem with the system or they want to work with the system it's rarely possible to uh, to convince a person to put money to make uh, alternative film in Egypt uh, the money came from uh, international organization like the Ford Foundation and uh, and uh, the EU and so on um, and the experience with the EU was um, I, ha I have to say it was an opportunity to reach uh, uh, more people in the region and in Europe and to introduce us to uh, uh, chances let's say of course uh, everything said uh, get uh, his right it, it's good and bad it's uh, the project is big and then it uh, it collapsed <laughs> after the contract is finished. We cannot afford to continue with such uh, a kind of product like this without uh, this kind of money. Uh, but what we, we are trying to make now is uh, each time we have a, a chance to rebuild another project, we try to relate it to what we did before. We try to, to work with people who, were, um, who had other projects before like this as if we are building a scales i don't know i'm i'm not sure that we will succeed in this but for the time being we have a new project with the european it calls ecam uh, investing in culture and art in the south mediterranean so it's uh, it's a project to meant to be uh, supporting films and audiovisual production in the region for the idea that we had in mind that why not working with a project like what Ed was uh, uh, making since one uh, year, why not uh, continuing? Um, and it's good to to create new things all the time, but uh, it's also good, um, uh, in my opinion, to um, continue supporting what really succeeded before. Um, and as a whole, that's it. <laughs> Okay, so so what you are saying is, uh, since this year there there is the launching of a new uh, of a new project. I forgot yeah. to tell you something. Please, ah. we have a, a small problem, of course, because there is a new law in Egypt saying that we cannot touch the money until we have a permission from the security. I think we will have the the permission because they don't want problems with the EU. But I mean, this kind of of uh, struggles, uh, local struggles, the people they don't understand when they when they came to Egypt, they don't understand why the people cannot really easily uh, took a camera and just shot their films in the street. It's not that easy anymore. It's not possible now. Um, uh, we need to to protect. Um, the people from a lot of things, different issues, not concerning the film scene. And then also we, we are still have this problem of the censorship. Um, I'm talking about all this stuff to, to try to, um, to explain that the uh, filmmaker in, uh, in Egypt or in the Arab region is um, having a lot of uh, uh, phantoms before really reaching the, the good script. It's a complicated a bit. Yeah, but but now I mean it may sound a bit confusing because the program uh, that that is launched here is actually also not only for Egypt. I mean you are touching the money in Egypt because you have to administrate it there, but in in fact it is to be regional. redistributed for regional uh, effect. Yes. So it's a sort of fin film fund, yes. new film fund. That's what I understood, right? Or yeah. Yes. Okay. So and and it will also run for three years, yes. uh, as usual, yes. uh, with regards to contracts with the. EU. But it's coming okay. from the mid culture, not the, uh, because there are uh, there is a component, different component under the umbrella of the EU. For this is a mid culture program. What does that mean? Sorry. It's another it's program. A new project. It's a new project, a new program. You see, they are inventing okay, uh, components. But, but the effect on the ground is that we, we, are, ha we, will, we are having now another regional fund. Yeah. yeah? Okay. For... No, the difference is uh, the Euromed uh, give money for project uh, to be spent in the project. Here, uh, it's another issue. They give money for a project 
and they will have to distribute them yeah. the money. Mm. They will not use it. Yeah, but that's why it's a fund. It's not. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so now, Lucas. Um, uh, Lucas Rosand is uh, uh, well. I, I, you, ha you have so many activities that I really. You're right. producing films. You are making films. You have been one of the mm, uh, one of the participants of uh, the Dubai Film Connection in terms of uh, yeah, also organization. You are in many selection committees. So c could you please elaborate more on your tasks before then you give me a short of uh, uh, sort of brief account of you know, how actually the funding map in the Arab world looks mm. like. So but please introduce yourself a bit further. Please. Okay, so uh, uh, my name is Lucas Rosan, and I'm, I'm French. Uh, I'm born in Yorkshire, actually. Uh, but um, so indeed, I've been working for, for nearly 20 years, mainly for film festivals and markets. So I've been working, I mean, in France for Cannes, of course, and I mean, Rotterdam, Berlin, Venice, Hong Kong, uh, in Durban. Uh, and, and many others, and, and for seven years I've run the Dubai Film Connection, which is a, a co-production market for, for Arab projects. Uh, Arab projects meaning uh, feature films with Arab directors attached, uh, whether documentaries or fiction. Um, then I've also, uh, as Viola said, I've, I've done a, a bit of co-production. Uh, with the Arab world, I've, I've co-produced a short film, a fiction film in Palestine, a uh, couple of years ago, which was in Clermont-Ferrand, and recently I've co-produced a film with Egypt and, and South Africa that premiered at ITFA. The director is South African, but we, we shot most of the film in, in Egypt and a bit in Lebanon and Turkey, so we, we tried the Arab funds, but we, we got none of them because of this very hybrid, bastardish situation we had in our hands. Um, in, in addition to that, I also work for several institutions. Uh, I've done uh, work for the Euromed as well. I've done a study on co-production in the Arab world in the past years, uh, some, some kind of census and analysis of, of the situation in the Arab uh, countries in the South Mediterranean. Um, I've worked for, oh, I'm still working for several funds as the Francophonie, the, the uh, Uber Bars, which is for fiction, the Edo Cinema du Monde, which does a little documentary, and things like that. Um, so, I mean, I, I can briefly give a, a, a landscape indeed of the, of the funds in, in the Arab world, even though I might not be the, 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 the most specialist here. I mean, I would say like, if we talk only about development here, or we talk about funding in yeah. yeah. Because I mean, in terms of development, it nearly doesn't exist. Uh, there, there are a couple of Pan-African funds that do support uh, uh, development development which are quite young. I mean, they are all less than 10 years old. I mean, AFAC, I don't know how old is AFAC, is uh, Arab Foundation for, for Art and Art Culture, and culture yes. which mm. is based in This is the only, re Lebanon, the yeah. only real Arab, uh, I mean, it has uh, some sponsoring, Arab sponsoring, which is one of yes. the uh, unique, actually. Yeah, yeah, with Arab money being, being yeah. scattered uh, uh, among uh, Arab projects. Uh, they, they are quite dedicated to documentaries, Absolutely. as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, there is also so in terms of Pan-Arab funds, the, the Screen Beirut Institute, which is based in Beirut, but I think the money is coming from Scandinavia, yeah, most uh, of it, uh, or something Denmark, like Denmark, yeah, Denmark. yes, uh, which is also very much dedicated to documentaries and do support development and, and production and, and some post-production as well. I'm not sure about yes, that. Yes. yes. And um, in terms of nation, uh, nationally, I think like it's nearly inexistent in most of the countries in regards to documentaries. Morocco, for example, like one or two years ago, started a, a fund for documentaries to support two films a year, but I've never used that money. Anyway, to have the, the, the I mean, to be able to work in Morocco, you need to do two short films, fiction short films in 35 millimeters. Then you get uh, the, the carte professionnelle <laughs> Which, which enable you to do a feature film, documentary of fiction. So imagine the situation for the new generation coming in, you know, 25 with digital cameras and things like that. It's impossible for them to get, you know, like to get money or to get uh, uh, authorization to do documentaries. They're stuck in fiction and they're stuck in 35. Uh, it's difficult. 
Uh, I mean, Lebanon has, I mean, it's not much as we understood uh, earlier. Egypt, had, I mean, Egypt had a tradition, was the grand old lady of cinema since Nasser, uh, but, but it has all, I mean, the studios are dead. I mean, it's, it's a very, it, yeah. Egypt has not collapsed <laughs> in the past years, but it's not there. No, well, I mean, well, it's, it's, uh, not it's a phoenix. Huh? Okay, I mean, this is leading but us to another uh, yes, issue. The I fiction, in, uh, the film industry is still working, so it's not collapsing. No, but it nothing has, is collapsing. It has, it has, I mean, uh, it's going okay. up and it, down. It's shrunk, it's yes. shrunk, it's shrunk. I mean, at the moment, it's, <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> down, <laughs> but you know, it like five, years, it will, five years ago, <laughs> Arab funding was up, and it will be back again I mean, the word collapse seems really very, very, seems to trigger. A lot strong, of it's a strong here. word. <laughs> I mean, and, and for, for the uh, for the Gulf, uh, I mean, indeed, ten years ago they came strong, they came fast. This is now the crucial question I wanted to ask you because you were in the kitchen, yeah. Yeah. So please tell us a bit more about the Gulf involvement, <laughs> <laughs> because the, this is actually, if we can speak about collapse, about we should really. Uh, stick well, because there was a, a real hype with, you yes. know, the Gulf uh, in jazz. We had in jazz. Yes, we have yes, Sanad. Yes. We have the Doha Film Institute, <laughs> and they uh, strangely launched very big projects like 50 million films. Yeah, I'll try not to be cynical big flops, about that. big f European <laughs> yeah co-productions yeah. flop that flopped. Yeah, America but what got did a they really? Yeah, America exactly. So a lot of you know people coming from the West trying to get the money mm. out from there, and they succeeded. But how did the Arab world really? I mean, well, small co-productions. To which extent was there a really? Pro did they profit? But also then you know, um, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, well, what happened in these ten years? A lot of things have happened, and a lot of things are disappearing uh, in the past. Months. I mean, in the past years. Indeed, Dubai started like 12, 13 years ago, first, first festival in, in, in this region that has absolutely no history when it comes to audiovisual, uh, like there, there were no school, no, like non, no, no film has ever been done in this region before, before Dubai Film Festival started, and since then only two feature films have been done in I mean, am I, am I, like, contradict no, no, no. me, am no, no, I wrong, no, no, but right. Saudi Arabia, the, the first feature film was uh, with the was Wajda, which... No, well, no, that's not true. But I mean, I no, there was uh, another one that was shot in India. I, no, 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 there is a local in, one. In Kuwait, no. there was... Uh, a beginning. No, no. Yeah, there are films, but uh, okay. In the seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's. Wajda is the first totally internationally existing. known. Okay, but, but I mean, it's it okay. was like, well, yeah. I mean, in the Emirates, the first film was City of Life, I think. The first feature. Uh, there film were uh, other preceding, okay, yeah. but you are uh, more or less okay. Yeah, sorry about. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's stick I'm to being the. Being a bit cynical, so yeah. Let's stick to the. So, so yes, yeah, so Dubai started and, and created this festival that you have all heard about, and then created the market uh, with the Dubai Film Connection and the video library, etc. Then uh, Abu, um, yeah, Abu Dhabi started its own festival. Abu Dhabi and Dubai are in the same country, the Emirates. Uh, and then Do Doha started uh, it. I mean, then uh, wh why one would follow the others? I guess it's question of like I want to be. I mean, I don't want to be cynical. Anyway, yeah. one started, the other ones followed. Uh, then uh, uh, it's competition. Yeah, and, and competition. they, they compete. It's competition. Exactly. Yes, I mean, yes. it's competition. Compete. Yeah, exactly. And so if you get money from one, the other. Yes, uh, okay, but the, in end, in, in the end, what happened is that uh, there are actually no more. Uh, there is in jazz is functioning, in jazz but the Dubai functioning. Film Connection was called off, even yeah, though it, it was very gonna, very gonna, successful. Yeah, it's going to yeah. come back on a very uh, reduced uh, shape because they they, they they had a big budget cut also because of, I mean, of the universal exhibition in 2020, whatever. So they, they had to cut the, the market. But then they realized if they have no market, they have nobody visiting the festival. So they are, they are bringing back the, the, the market, but like lower money, so less, less, less people, less project and things like that. In the meantime, Doha stopped the festival in, exactly. in Doha, but kept the Doha Film Institute which at the beginning was dedicated to Arab films, but now they are supporting international films. So most of the money of Doha is going to Mirana or, or to some... FIFA. To yeah. <laughs> FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and you can't make documentaries about FIFA. <laughs> 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 That's forbidden. Eh? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, they, are, yeah, they, they also have issue money. You know, okay, that. so. And then, and, and then, yes, Abu Dhabi has stopped the, the festival like a couple of weeks ago. They announced it, but they kept the Sanad uh, uh, fund, wow. which is, oh, they do have a development, post -pro uh, production, etc. They have supported some documentaries. But my bet is that if they don't have a festival, Sanad is going to die within one year because, as Viola said, this money wasn't free. I mean, sometimes, you, like Angels, you, it's a co-production deal. It's not like free money, like a subsidy. You, you, you have to give rights. And usually, they, they, as they always had a festival attached, they wanted the golf premiere. So indeed, it's very much a question of <coughs> competition. Okay, now, I mean, uh, still there is a lot of more to talk about in more details. Also, regionally, of course, th 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 there are uh, huge differences between the different uh, Arab countries. You can see also here already Egypt, uh, Lebanon, and then the Gulf states, etc. attempts. I mean, Morocco, which is actually amazing because they are the ones who have the more, most clever and sustainable yeah. uh, development uh, program in the region uh, with, with great effect, actually. But let me now, because, I mean, here, for some of you, it might be a strange discussion because, I mean, for you, documentary is so much linked or for a lot of Europeans. And the, even the European documentary would not be the one it is without television. Because we all know in the 70s, the big names of uh, European uh, documentary film, even when they are very creative, uh, you know, direct cinema like Fechner, Wildenhahn, whoever, they all profited from television, particularly French and, and, uh, uh, and German television and the BBC, of course. There were great programs and still going on. Channel 4. Did we launch that? <laughs> so my question would go now to Mohammed. I mean, Mohammed is what someone who really tried to uh, get uh, television on board for uh, for not only Lebanese films, but also I mean, first you started uh, in Lebanon to produce your own, to make your own films in uh, the then newly created channels, but then. Uh, and now you're, you are the director of O3 Productions, uh, uh, which is NBC located in the Gulf. And uh, so where is the involvement actually of Arab television with documentary? I, I think it's, it's very simple, but yet complicated uh, question because... Uh, I mean, very brie uh, I mean uh, as, as brief as we can, so... Uh, okay. No, no. I, I, I will uh, no. But because uh, it's easy to give answers on uh, this issue, um, but yet when you you are in, uh, it's it's not uh, it's not that easy. I I think the, uh, we should uh, start uh, discussing how uh, uh, we are a kind of people of my generation. We are cinema survivors. And being survivor, it can be a grace and can be also a curse, you know. Uh, because being a survivor might mean uh, you are ready to do anything to stay alive and, uh, and be in a way, it, it's, it may lead to a selfish conduct, you know. But uh, being survivor also means you are continuing your fight to get to stay alive also. So there are two, two things that go together uh, of being a survivor. Uh, first, you, you might be an opportunist. Th th second, you can be a really hard to worker and uh, not only work for yourself, but for, for the others. Uh, in this sense, I think there was a kind of uh, illusion for film survivors, you know. Uh, I think the greater trend that we had in the Arab world when we talk about alternative cinema or uh, independent cinema, whatever you, you want to call it, uh, uh, the, the documentary films, even if you go to, to early films made in the 70s and 60s, there was a kind of de a democratic practice in this, you know. When someone like Kinis will go to Oman to, to film the Marxist uh, uh, groups uh, there, you know, and now you look at uh, that film, 
even it's a bad film, you know. But you, you had a really, at that time, a rare document on Marxist group in the Gulf region. You know. Haynes Rose film. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's called Stamar uh, yeah, something there. Uh, time for Revolution, uh, 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 colo uh, colonial uh, power get out. It's, it's, a, it's a, a, re a really long, uh, long question. And the same for uh, establishing documentaries like uh, one, the one who, who were made by Omar Amir Alai, you know, in uh, early 70s and late 60s in Syria. So uh, it, there was a trend of uh, the, uh, uh, that reflect, in my opinion, an appeal for democracy. And with the advent of the video and the digital formats, this trend became uh, bigger, and you have a real involvement in uh, local uh, society uh, problems and concerns. But since the people who made these films are survivors, they couldn't uh, kept going on because of uh, the reasons we mentioned about uh, the lack of uh, uh, local fund, uh, the lack of uh, uh, political and strategic involvement by the governments in, in the region. So they, they thought that TV would bring that space, you know. Uh, that space of uh, freedom and uh, a kind of nursing uh, <laughs> to, to nurse this uh, uh, the attempt to, to, to be. But TV also, they have their own uh, prospects and uh, they have their own strategic uh, uh, plans and they have their own policies also. So I, I think there was... I, I think we tried to snatch the money from TV to keep surviving, and the TVs in return tried to snatch the talent for their own. So you have two negative, uh, uh, two, two, two negative uh, flirt uh, that led actually to nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that led to nothing because it didn't give uh, the first party who are the film survivors or what they thought they, they would. And for the TV also, they didn't get what they could be considered a mainstreaming uh, product that could uh, shed the light on this TV worldwide or uh, so. Mm -hmm. So that, I don't think the, the TV adds something. It's it ate out. So, so in terms of numbers, actually, uh, we can say that uh, most of the most of the uh, documentaries aired by Arab, uh, particularly mm. by the Arab um, satellite ch channels uh, that cover the whole Arab world, Al Jazeera and Al Arabiya and NBC, mm. that these documentaries are not Arab documentaries, but they are largely either acquired it's or... A, yeah, a television, it's a, it's a huge uh, uh, windmill, you know, for, for mm. films, because uh, you, you have uh, to, to uh, I don't know, Al Jazeera, for instance, they commissioned, there was a time they commissioned 500 hours a year. You cannot find, uh, uh, you have to, to, to look for talents, you have to look for resources you have to look uh, and and in the arab world you have nothing mm. you have nothing in terms uh, if you want to talk about uh, a proper uh, documentary tv probably you don't have access to research you don't have access to archives mm. and even the most of the uh, arab media outlets they uh, don't care about they don't and they want the film as completed Mm. But if you want to go inside, there are other costs related to rights, to archive, to music, to uh, you have to to do it uh, the Arabic way. You know, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is uh, this is really I mean, most of our archive, which is the national memory and the collective memory, cannot be found in any uh, Arab uh, organization now. You know, mm -hmm. if you want something on uh, 
the uh, 1967 war or even uh, on the independence of Lebanon and Syria and uh, Nasser, uh, mm. you have to, to look to at to uh, INA in mm. France, you have yeah. to look at uh, ITN in yeah. uh, England. So, and it, it, it costs you a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, may I ask you, Jed, I mean, you, you tried also as a director and producer to work with Arab television, but at the same time, you tried also the system of co-production with yeah. uh, particularly, I mean, co if you talk about co-production, is that Arab-Arab co-production or European co-production or what is that? Can you just explain a little briefly? The, the example of, uh, of, of the TV in Europe, uh, I think uh, uh, we're not talking uh, at all about the same thing. Uh, 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 the European TV uh, 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 was there. We we're talking about Arte and mm. uh, this uh, French-German uh, uh, television or uh, BBC or whatever. Yeah, there are also uh, smaller channels, actually, uh, that, yeah, that did yeah, also yeah, yeah. produce, uh, but, at least in but, Europe. But, yeah. but, but, but the idea is uh, was to support existing producer and director who was working on their films. In the Arab world, when, uh, when uh, this uh, satellite channel was created, uh, uh, the idea is to commission something they want to to, to put on, on screen. And it's a big difference. Uh, 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 few uh, production was, uh, was uh, the initiation of, uh, of, of the producer or, or the directors. Mm. The, 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 most, uh, uh, the most of the time, the, the, the TV channel who asked the director or the producer to do a film about uh, this topic or, or, or this one. And this is largely, of course, topics that are uh, spectacular or related to, to, car to, current, to affairs, current affairs. Current affairs, of course. Okay. Mm. And with uh, all the restriction you can imagine, mm. uh, uh, if we're talking about uh, Islam or whatever, mm. uh, uh, because they are... Uh, I uh, Sorry, or, identity, or woman, yeah. or oh, <laughs> or identity, or whatever, and uh, and uh, uh, so, so so the comparison is not uh, is is not fair because we're not talking about the yeah. same the same thing. The role of the television in the Arab world is really completely different from the, uh, the role in Europe. It's not the same. Uh, so the, the other part of the question? Uh, the co-production, co but I can give that question now uh, okay. to, uh, to Lucas, because Luc Lucas actually made a, Luca uh, did uh, uh, yeah, a research on, uh, on uh, uh, recent co-production between, uh, yeah, in the Arab yeah. world, it's a general, uh, yes. so can you just give us a very brief uh, yes. yeah, excerpt I'll, I'll of the re results, yeah. please? Well, it was for, for feature film documentaries and fiction in, in the Arab world, and what, what like from 2006 to 13, and basically 28% of the co-productions are documentaries, so it's mainly fiction that are, that are co-produced. Uh, the, 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 the two countries that are doing more co-production in terms of documentaries are Egypt and Palestine, also because Palestine has the strong, I mean, produce more documentaries than fiction, mainly for, because, also because documentaries are cheaper than, than fiction. I mean, it's also a reality. Uh, and, 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 and this and needs less material. Uh, and, and then in terms of, of collaboration, as, as Mohamed said earlier, there, there is very few co-production between the Arab world. It represents something like 5% of all those co-production. 80% of those co-production are with, are with Europe and 40% of them only with France only. And then 15% with Germany, which are the two main partners for the Arab world. And also because, I mean, the, the lack of collaboration is a very interesting point that, that Mohamed uh, talked about because there are, I mean, there are very little co-production agreements between, between Arab countries. Uh, for example, there is one from, with Lebanon and Morocco but has never been used. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with co-production agreements, but basically if you use it, a films get double nationality and, and well, it's a bit complicated, whatever. 
Um, but the idea also because uh, uh, the co-production will not bring more uh, more it doesn't financing. bring money yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's more that it gives nationality to yeah. the film but doesn't bring money yeah. so that's also why I mean if there yeah. is no money available in, in Algeria or Morocco yeah. you cannot co-produce with them indeed mm-hmm. and and also I mean the, the, the I, I guess the, the the high rate of co-production for those films is also as, as what was said earlier is there is a lack of, of like real producer in the sense that people that you know have been doing this job for 10 years and are making a living out of this job i mean i think in the arab world that hardly exists mm-hmm. or they are doing teaching production servicing and things like that so a lot of initiative have been done to promote that uh, so let me just ask last question uh, to hella uh, because i mean uh, we actually also wanted to have uh, Nadine Salib on board here, uh, who is a young director uh, whose film was running, I think, the day before yesterday here, uh, The Mother of the Unborn, which is a documentary that was actually also uh, profited from, the, from several training programs, among others, the documentary uh, uh, Campus MENA program. But the idea about this film is that it's actually produced by a collective, a collective which was created around the film by Hella Lotfi um, uh, that was uh, launched in, in 2010, before the purgatory. And, um, <laughs> as, uh, and this collective is still working and they have several actually documentaries work, uh, I mean, uh, planned. And there are other, other collectives all over the Arab world, actually. Uh, Lebanon is just one of them. We have uh, collectives in Jordan. We have collectives in Tunisia. And we have several collectives in Alexandria and in Cairo. So I was wondering, do you think, Hela, because you are, are now one of the founders of the older collectives in the country, uh, in, in, in Egypt, and you have such a, a vast uh, also experience now. <laughs> do you think, I mean, where, first of all, does this initiative comes, uh, comes from, even though, and do you think these collectives stand a chance? Is there, how do you, how do you place that? What do you think about that? Um, actually, I believe that, yes, it is good to have uh, Mohammed Sweed on the television and to have collectives all over the world, the Arab world, because we don't have a real uh, um, a decision from the authority, for example, or a political decision to stand for good documentaries or uh, uh, good films. So the, every single initiative come from an individual person or a group of person, yes, I think it's very useful. I think it will live. I'm not. Uh, I'm not pessimist about this. What is uh, what Hala Lutfi did uh, until now is a very good experience. It is short, but they produce very interesting films. Um, so, um, and also what is uh, happening in the Cinematheque with Tamer Saeed. And I mean, yeah. Yani if the question is whether this is uh, uh, useful or not, yes, it is very useful. I, I think so. I think until we reach another scene in our country, we, we, we don't have other choices. And this is what we should continue to do, and maybe we should, uh, consider, maybe we should be uh, more careful about the networking to support each other regionally and on the country. Maybe this is uh, the effort that we should put more. But, uh, but I think this is, I mean, exactly the idea, because collectives are pointing into that direction, because already on the, on the national level, this is already collaboration. Yeah. I mean, to put individuals who are artists, and each one of them wants to make, of course, his own her film, Mm. But still, I mean, now uh, uh, these co- uh, co- collectives are now, they are existing now for several years. And I mean, Bayrou DC and yours, they are examples of long lasting uh, collectives. Mm. So I, I know there was a lot of negative, maybe, you know, self criticism and a lot of, of pessimism also transported here. But even, even Mohammed's uh, experience, I mean, you are still an O3 production, and you did a lot for Arabs, uh, Arab documentary, because in the beginning, particularly, you carved out a lot of space for, for different films. In, uh, more. And you yourself, you made uh, documentary films in television that are different, that are not following the mainstream. So I think w- what we should always 
pay attention to or be aware of, it's a constant struggle. And what we are actually, we, we're trying to reflect here is not, you know, uh, the end with the collapse, but actually, you know, that every collapse <laughs> <laughs> brings also that a chance for something new, you know, and it's a constant actually struggle and efforts to, you know, to kind of restructure the whole, uh, uh, yeah, the whole field. So I know you want to say something, but let me just uh, give, open the floor. I just want to, to end up with of uh, course, a few, because uh, uh, let's be a uh, little bit fair about uh, what I mean is that uh, when approaching a TV, not even, not uh, only in the Arab world, also in Europe, uh, you shouldn't put on your mind high expectations. This is essential. And <clears throat> I think the role of the TV in the Arab world sometimes is similar also to what happens in Europe. Yeah. In Europe, also, if you, they have strict, uh, they have many restrictions uh, regarding the standard, uh, the uh, the standard production. Uh, even they force you to uh, not to extend uh, the sound wide to more than 20 seconds, for for example. So uh, you have a clear format also, and they commission like uh, and. Uh, I don't think they would agree also on all the terms you you want to. So I think it's similar, but uh, I don't think we have uh, enough space to alternative uh, TV, not alternative in the cultural meaning, even in drone, because so far the only successful uh, the projects you have is, uh, the, uh, are related to news because this is money available because the Arab world every day breathes uh, news, uh, breathes, uh, they start the day opening the radio to, to, to hear what happens here and there. And uh, I end up, it's, it's, it's actually not the collapse of uh, the documentary, it's the collapse of the Arabs. Yeah, I mean, it's not the Arab world, but the Arabs, are collapsing, and it started uh, some decades ago, and uh, this is, uh, nothing will disappear, but I think uh, we don't live the, uh, the good times now. Uh, mm. yeah. Okay, I yeah, mean, uh, part of the, the collapse the yeah, yeah. lies in the collapse of first of the Arab world, yeah, now of, of the I'm Arabs. Now, you know? Okay, uh, that's a, a very interesting cultural and, <laughs> and political question that we cannot pursue here. Yeah. What we also, I mean, but what it's interesting at that point is that it opens up to a discussion also for, of international, internationally in terms of what can television actually offer for documentary and vice versa. And I mean, this is a general ongoing. Uh, ongoing uh, uh, discussion of formats and the collapse of some formats and you know uh, that even television has started I mean to to standardize too much so uh, where is the space for new uh, new formats uh, I mean this is a discussion that is not only related to the Arab world but it's very general and I am thankful that you actually pointed out to it also anyways I would like now to uh, open the floor for questions um, yeah so that uh, you have also a chance. Please, yes. Uh, Hali, I couldn't understand one point. Uh, some of the European Union funds available for uh, military dictator Sisi government and uh, which has not been available for uh, documentary producers. So can you a little bit clarify it? Is it so then the gatekeeper is the military regime uh, in Egypt? And this first part of the question, and uh, I am viewer from Turkey, and uh, uh, I think there is a massive consumption of material from Arab world, mainly Syria and Egypt, but most of them are on YouTube or Al Jadaliya, maybe Zamanalske, uh, net kind of things. So maybe these dictators or Libya or other countries, they are very chaotic, very uncontrollable. Uh, they are, sorry, very restrictive in that sense. But on the other hand, there is huge material flowing uh, in an unmanageable way. And uh, so then the credibility for uh, governments like Sisi government, I think is quite minimal. 
So then how do you locate yourself in this regard? Because there is a confusion. Because on one side they say you, you say there is mainstream demand, but when you do produce or you know you try to survive, you know, within this scope of you know uh, uh, reality, it should be really difficult. Maybe there is no question, but there is some suggestions. Yeah, that that was my question. What is the question? <laughs> I didn't understand quite well what you mean by uh, the money of the EU went to the um, uh, to the system. Uh, system and city system. Of course, uh, but I mean the the other system were uh, similar. We n we didn't yet have a system that we really like. I have to tell, if you are asking me about my personal opinion, but the money of the EU who went to, uh, let go to the government uh, component. It doesn't mix with uh, what they uh, provide for the uh, civil uh, uh, society. It's, it doesn't work like this. This is the European system. I didn't create it. But uh, when, I'm, when I'm creating a project with colleagues and uh, uh, having money from the EU, it doesn't pass by the government. I think you, you misunderstand something. They never give the money to the government and then the government give it to the civil system. It doesn't work like this. They have component for the governments because at the end the EU is the governments of Europe. It is the official governments of Europe. And then they decide to uh, provide some support to the uh, culture, uh, uh, independent uh, scene, let's call it like this, or civil society whatsoever. So they put this money apart. And actually there is all, all the time in our country a struggle between the government and the civil society about this money. So, of course, when the government take the money, it is okay, and when the civil society take it, it's, uh, we are, we are t uh, um, doing something wrong. But, um, but still, it is working like this. But I didn't quite understand your question. I'm sorry. I, I didn't I, I mean, get to, it. To make it. The money is not only for Egyptian films. Yeah. The money is to be shared to other Arab Exactly. It, to, to it, make it is it, always, yeah. sorry, Vera, it is always regional. A program they are they I mean, they prefer the regional pro program. It is not money going to the system or the CC system or the Egypt only. It's not working like this actually. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope. Yeah, it's 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 clear. You know that uh, what what happens is that the Egyptian government tries to curb the activities of civil society by. Uh, giving no permission for the money that comes from abroad for them to be released exactly. so that it gets stuck. They cannot, I mean, the government cannot use it, but they cannot, uh, the, the civil society cannot receive it. Okay, so the money gets stuck. And this is the way how, you know, to curb, to, to give, to, to, uh, to foster and support only those, those uh, organizations that are... Uh, uh, you know that that are supported by the regime and those who are critical particularly human rights organizations they will have difficulties to access the money their money you know that's the issue exactly oh. okay uh, another question uh, my question is what is with new possibilities that the internet is opening do you use uh, do you use these possibilities now, financing, distribution, and so on? Because you were comparing television in an Arab world with television in Europe, and I had uh, impression that you are comparing Arab television with something that does not exist anymore. Because uh, one of the things that is collapsing is public television yes. in Europe. <laughs> And uh, we filmmakers and producers, we are looking for possibilities in these new yes, fields that internet is opening. Is there some ideas uh, yes. to use it too? Let me answer this because CIMAT, the production house or the platform that we create since 15 years now, since four years had a YouTube channel uh, called CAF TV Culture Art for Freedom. It's on YouTube, it's, uh, it's open and we put our old uh, production there. And uh, the new project, uh, ICAM, uh, normally we will uh, create a, what we call a, a crowd uh, funding. Uh, funding to try to support films more because the fund is very limited and also to, to continue online with uh, the young fellows in the region and all over the world, of course, because it's a, you're right, you're totally right, the internet is a, is a new platform, it's not new, but I mean it's a it will become in the future um, 
the way to connect. I believe that. I think uh, just to, if I understood clear the question, I, I think uh, the the answer is negative because uh, you. Are, I think you meant is there uh, any idea about turning the internet outlets into uh, business uh, profitable? Uh, uh, it's not yet in the Arab world. I, I mean the. Uh, uh, for instance, in the TV I work for, uh, we request now, in addition to the broadcast right, the right to uh, extend the broadcast on our internet outlets, such as uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and uh, our uh, main internet. But does this uh, generate uh, to us uh, revenues? Uh, does this open... Uh, a window to, to develop our TV to a web TV, the answer is no. And the answer is no, not only for our TV, but for all the Arab uh, acting uh, TVs. So it's still, I think, they are, this is the same happened with the paper press because they have their websites and they have um, lots of readers on uh, uh, the internet but this didn't help them to solve their financial problem due to the advent of the internet. Okay. So we're still in a phase, uh, actually, uh, not, uh, it's not. Because the whole, co also the commercials in the Arab world, you have many TVs, hundreds of TVs, and you have many magazines and uh, newspapers but the volume of uh, the commercials that is, is distributed throughout all these outlets uh, doesn't, uh, it, it, it's not uh, compared to the budget of uh, Discovery Channel, for instance, yeah. or National Geographic. Yeah. But, but on a, la a smaller scale, I mean, the Arab Fund for Arts and Culture, for example, they are working on a program, you know, to how to cre to make to foster the the the, uh, cr the production of short documentaries and then also to launch them online. And there are, of course, also individual uh, attempts to uh, work, you know, to to work uh, to d release films uh, through video on demand. But it's still not, you know, there is still not a big system there. There are individual attempts to do so, uh, but still... Yeah, um, I want to say something. Uh, Mohammed, you are right, but the idea, uh, we are working with a group of young people now, they don't want the internet to be a new market, and the uh, opposite. They want to be, uh, they put everything free, but the idea is that they can network with the whole world to, to, uh, to fundraise the films, to have uh, audience. It's not about me creating a new market on the online, like uh, killing the television and create the internet. It's not working like this. They have in mind, of course, I'm very old from this generation too, but since I work with them since years, the idea is totally different. It's not about bringing money from the internet. It's about bringing money from all over the world and put everything free on the internet. It's a bit different uh, uh, vision, and I believe that it will work in 10 years. Allah yeah, that's, uh, that's also a possibility. I mean, things also get, uh, you know, tr kind of have their own dynamics and, uh, uh, yeah, will we'll be, yeah, will develop probably in a certain direction that we do not but always it, it's, it's more constructive also to think of uh, not uh, only a market, uh, money generating uh, in order to preserve and shield the independence of uh, the filmmaker, you know? Uh, why should I put uh, my production for free? Well, um, mm. uh, it's, it's easy now to, uh, to use the, the, this service. I finish a film, I put it on Vimeo, and then... Uh, but sometimes you easy. do so when you have actually got already the funds for it, so uh, you don't need, uh, to need, need any more revenues, so, so you put it for certain reasons, and, and there are actually a, a quite a bunch of young, young directors who are doing this since mm. the very beginning. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's intentional, and uh, yeah. Um, any more questions? Okay. Did we answer all questions? Wow, I'm happy. Oh. <laughs> uh, thank you for your talk. Can I ask about new Arab wave? Can you please, um, in a short way, talk about like main elements of uh, new Arab documentary wave? 
Okay, what I meant, it's my creation, okay? Uh, what I meant was that, but I can do so as a film historian, you know, I have the liberty to, and, and uh, I can, you know, <laughs> I can create. I can imagine. <laughs> whatever I want, but this is no imagination, my dear. But actually, the new waves really starts with the 90s, with what I consider, you know, uh, among others, uh, Mohammed Swede's work in the beginning of the 1990s, the end of the Lebanese civil war, the beginning also of a sort of involvement of television on the on the ground but at the same time the digital media the digital turn has been responsible for creating a sort of new wave because uh, the uh, before that you know the, the means of productions were almost uh, were very hard to attain um, 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter because of the whole technical infrastructure and because of the the, the huge uh, amount of money that you needed to spend in order to make films so this made all the, the, uh, the most of Arab uh, uh, documentary filmmakers be dependent on the states at that time. But with the digital turn, there is a, a shift where there is a sort of possible privatization of the means of production. And this has led to a sort of new, f new wave of, of Arab documentary, as I would label it. Uh, independent filmmakers who were able, I mean, those who, st who still stuck to the states and to the television or started to work for Al for Al Jazeera and so on are one part but a number of filmmakers who started to uh, try and make creative documentaries to and there is therefore an elaboration i mean mohammed said already during the 60s 70s these were films the most interesting films were those that were politically very uh, i mean direct cinema films or socially socially uh, realistic films that were concerned with the social re realism and problems on the ground and political questions after that starting with the 90s, we have many different formats, subjective films, uh, performative uh, films, like in, in the West, you know, uh, a sort of uh, different different approaches uh, to documentary filmmaking, and this was made possible first by the t technique, by the digital turn, but then also due also to the ch internet and, and the changes on the, on, on, on the ground, and then the co-production system, and uh, also the Gulf funding since 10 years. So these are the elements that created a sort of new wave, which I'm talking. Is that clear? Okay, thank you so much. Any, okay, last question. Um, <clears throat> I'm Andrea Zimmermann from Vista Rush in Germany and we are co-producing and producing in Mecca and Medina and we were lucky because Mohamed Suede licensed a program but we started in Germany and then Al Arabiya was the first channel. And um, we have another problem because we would like to more more documentaries, blue chip documentaries, and we are looking for Arab filmmakers that are experienced or... Uh, uh, can I, sorry, uh, 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 Jed needs just to make a very important phone call, so okay. don't, uh, don't get offended, he just needs really to go. Um, so I was wondering if it's possible uh, with a MENA program, for example, you mentioned to find also filmmakers that are willing to do um, blue chip documentaries, or is that a program specially for very independent and uh, avant-garde uh, filmmakers? The MENA program, uh, the Documentary Campus MENA program was a training program. It was. We, uh, largely, the, the the recipients of the of uh, who, uh, the attendance were um, a doc creative documentary filmmakers, but this is not a, a, a funding program. It's a training program. That was the one I was speaking about. And then there are there different funds. Uh, the the funds that are accessible to you as a European is primarily the Doha Film Institute fund, or if you have a, an Arab document. Uh, Arab director on board, then you can access also all the other Arab funds. But otherwise, uh, yeah. And with television, I'm not an expert, but I think there is Al Jazeera documentary that you can access and O3 productions. Uh, otherwise, I don't see where you can can get uh, funding for your project. Ah. For talents, because I saw ah, that it's very very ah. difficult, you know, to find talents. Yeah. Uh, from the Arab world with a Muslim background that under know, understand the culture and we are based in Germany and we are looking for Arab talents. Oh, oh yeah, then of course this is, uh, the, your first way would, would be, uh, of course, then all these 
initiatives that we were speaking mm -hmm. about, yeah, to access the website and look, Arab Fund for Arts for Culture has a website with all the program, uh, with all the projects and the names. Uh, Beirut Screen Institute has a, a you know a website with all the names and the projects where you can see which which is the profile of the director or the project that could suit you. Uh, then mm -hmm. uh, Documentary Campus, they have everything. DocMed, Beirut DC, they, it's all on online. So you just need to go to Google these initiatives and look at the projects and you'll find, you know, dozens. And then, of course, you can speak also to uh, the representatives of the different initiatives and see maybe they can recommend you people to the specific, uh, you know, program that you are trying to design. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah, thank you very much for your attention and thanks again, uh, Manu for or Manuela Winkler, who was uh, helping, or she actually organized it. Thank you so much for your efforts and the whole organization and yeah, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you. <laughs>